go back. Despite the great danger, she got through. She had lost everything, her home, her position, her books, her salary, her pension, even her native language. She had been cut off from her work just at the time when she was leading the field and was on the brink of a major scientific discovery. No matter what privations she suffered, Lisa was still thinking of physics. Amazingly, she and Han were able to collaborate by letter. I hope, my dear Otto, that after 30 years of work together and friendship in the Institute, that at least the possibility remains that you tell me as much as you can about what is happening back there. Lisa was invited by an old student friend to spend Christmas on the west coast of Sweden. Her nephew, Otto Robert Frisch, who was also a physicist, came to join her there. Aunt? 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 Lisa, how are you, my dear? <sighs> Merry Christmas, Aunt. <laughs> I need your help. Come on, let's go out. <laughs> but I was hoping you'd help me. Back in Berlin, Han was getting strange results. He found no evidence to suggest that bombarding the uranium nucleus with neutrons had caused it to increase in size. In fact, his experiments seemed to be contaminated with radium, a smaller atom. He desperately needed Meitner's expert analysis. From afar, she was starting to suspect that something very different was happening in their experiment. Han and Strassman are getting some strange results with the uranium work. Really? A couple of months ago, Han told me that they were finding radium amongst the uranium products. We are looking for a much bigger element, and here we're finding something much smaller. I urged Han to check again. It couldn't be radium. And now he writes to me and tells me that it's not radium, it's barium. But that's even smaller. Exactly. Han is sure that it's another error, but I don't know anymore. It is at least possible that barium is being produced. So Han still needs you to interpret the data. It is my work too, you know. Exactly. Well. I can't be there, can I? Come on, let's walk. Surely he's made a mistake, hasn't he? He hasn't done what you told him to. Oh, my darling Robert, he may not be a brilliant theorist, but oh, he's too good a chemist to get this wrong. If you imagine a drop of water, a big drop, it's unstable, on the verge of breaking apart. It turns out that a big nucleus like uranium is just like that. Now for four years, Meitner and Hahn and all other physicists had thought that if you pump more neutrons into this nucleus, it'll just get bigger and heavier. But suddenly, Meitner and Frisch, out in the midday snow, realized this nucleus might just get so big that it would split in two. If the nucleus is so big that it has trouble staying together, then couldn't just a little tiny joke from a neutron... And... Yes, but if the nucleus did split, the two halves would fly apart with a huge amount of energy. Where's that energy going to come from? How much energy? Well, we worked out that the mutual repulsion between two nuclei would generate about 200 million electron volts. 
But something has to supply that energy. Wait, let me do a packing friction calculation. So two nuclei are lighter than the original nucleus of the uranium by about one-fifth of a proton in mass. What? So some mass has been lost. Einstein's equals mc squared. If we multiply the loss mass by the speed of light squared, we get... ...200 million electron volts. He split the atom. No, no, no. You've split the atom. It was an amazing discovery. Of course, in the laboratory, we're talking about tiny amounts of uranium and correspondingly tiny amounts of energy. But the point is that the amount of energy released was relatively large and that it came from the mass of the uranium itself. The energy released was entirely consistent with Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. Meitner and Frisch published the discovery of what they called nuclear fission to great acclaim. But betrayal awaited them. Otto Hahn was under pressure from the Nazi regime to write his Jewish colleague out of the story. He alone was awarded the 1944 Nobel Prize for the discovery. In his speech, he barely mentioned the leading role of Meitner. Bizarrely, even after the war, Hahn maintained it was he, and not Meitner, who had discovered nuclear fission. Now I want to write something personal which disturbs me and which I ask you to read with more than 40 year friendship in mind and with the desire to understand me. I am now referred to as Hans' longtime co-worker. How would you feel if you were only characterized as the longtime co-worker of me? After the last 15 years, which I wouldn't wish on any good friend, Shall my scientific past also be taken from me? Is that fair? And why is it happening? Lisa Meitner had been working on this for 30 years. She'd only broken apart a handful of atoms, but that was enough. Once she had broken even one, the genie was out of the bottle. What Meitner had started, after that, physicists around the world began to realize they could take it a lot further. In 1942, an intense effort to build an atom bomb was begun. All over America, secret installations sprang up under the code name, the Manhattan Project. Meitner was asked to join the Manhattan Project, and she refused. She refused to have anything to do with the atomic bomb. But Robert Frisch was different. He was an important member of the team because he was convinced of the need to beat the Nazis in a nuclear arms race. A nuclear bomb was never used on Germany. But the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki demonstrated the terrible, destructive power of E equals mc squared. Vast amounts of energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation were released from a few pounds of uranium and plutonium. While the pure inquisitiveness of the world's most gifted scientists ironically had brought humanity a weapon of mass destruction, 
The Equation's life has a parallel story of creation and beauty. Today, young physicists carry on Einstein's quest. Ever since its birth, E equals mc squared has been used to delve into the depths of time, to answer the biggest question of all, where did we come from? At particle accelerators, researchers propel atomic particles to the speed of light and smash them together, creating conditions like those in the Big Bang. E equals mc squared actually tells us how the Big Bang itself happened. In the first moments of creation, the universe was this immensely dense, immensely concentrated eruption of energy. As it rushed apart and expanded, huge amounts of energy, or E, were converted into mass, or M. Pure energy became matter. It became the particles and atoms, and it eventually formed the first stars. Our sun is a huge furnace floating in space, and it's powered by equals mc squared. Now, it turns out every second, four million tons of solid mass of the sun disappears comes out as energy, not just a little bit of energy. It's enough to light up our entire solar system, make the solar system glow with heat and light. And not only do stars emit energy in accordance with E equals mc squared, the whole process actually creates life itself. Eventually, a massive star dies, the debris floats around, clusters together, gets pulled into the orbits of another star and becomes a planet. We humans and the Earth we stand on are made of stardust. We are a direct product of E equals mc squared. Building on the work of scientists through the ages, new generations are searching for answers. Using bold new tools that reach almost to the speed of light, they can now ask questions that their predecessors could never have even imagined. As Einstein himself knew, the journey of discovery is sometimes painful, sometimes joyful. It is as old as human curiosity itself and never, ever ends.